Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Katie. I'm the program manager for the Berkeley Initiative for Transparency in the Social Sciences. And the project I'm going to talk about today is focused on how we are advancing computational reproducibility in social science research, um, specifically through curriculum and the development of a, a digital online platform that enables the crowdsourcing of reproductions. Um, and so just to quickly kind of go over what BITS is, the organization that I work for, um, we promote ethical, transparent, and reproducible research with the broader goal of trying to inspire um, better evidence-informed policy. We do this in three different ways. We generate evidence through meta-research, science about science. Um, we develop curriculum and deliver trainings, usually to graduate students and early career researchers, and we support other trainers in training their own communities. And then this project that I'll be talking about later kind of falls under this last category of activities, which is trying to strengthen the, the scientific ecosystem. So developing digital infrastructure and working with institutions to develop better open science policy. Um, and just to make sure we're kind of on the same page about vocabulary, we are talking about reproducibility rather than replicability. So using the same data and methods. Um, so in other words, usually the same code or analytical decisions to try to get the same results that are published rather than using um, a new sample, new data. Um, and the figure here is just showing uh, the results of a few recent assessments of reproducibility of published work. Um, the right column is just for, for economics, but these rates are fairly common across other social science disciplines. Um, and these are for journals where there are actually data and code availability policies. So something I'm sure most people on this call are, are aware of is that computational reproducibility is not necessarily a given, even if you have access to the data and the code. Um, so that's one motivation for computational reproducibility. The other is trying to kind of take a more holistic perspective for what scholarship quote unquote is. Um, and so beyond the advertisement of results um, as, as Buckhead and Donahoe um, paraphrase here, um, beyond that, we're also interested in the full software environment, the code and the data, um, basically anything that can get you from this point A to point B that I've got here in the, the garden of forking paths things that aren't necessarily um, included in a published paper, but are necessary for understanding um, how someone got from point A to point B. Um, so kind of beyond, beyond accelerating our understanding as a scientific community of how research is done and how to, how to go beyond the research that's been published, um, we hope this can support learning of, you know, the, of graduate students, of other early career researchers, who are trying to understand how, how science is done, um, and also improve inclusion and participation in science. So um, as many probably know, there have been a lot of recent studies of race and gender and privilege in higher education, and that these are revealing pretty unequal access to opportunities to learn and to advance. Um, so in undergraduate education, you can think of things like um, knowing which is the right homework group to, to join, what office hours are, knowing how or who to ask for help from. And our hunch is that there are other kinds of implicit knowledge um, that exist and persist into graduate school and beyond. So you can think of how to access for, um, how to ask for data or materials, how to access them, what makes a paper publishable, um, how decisions are made, or even how to navigate authorship conversations. Um, so our hope is that by, uh, by exposing the reproducibility of published work, then we are kind of allowing more access to that kind of implicit knowledge or making it explicit. So the specific project we are calling the Accelerating Computational Reproducibility in the Social Sciences Project or ACRE. Um, it used to be a big E because we were focused on economics, but we have since expanded to the social sciences. So the acronym still mostly works. Um, but broadly, we are focused on developing curriculum for reproducibility, training students on how to go through the curriculum as well as instructors on how to integrate it into their courses. We're developing an online platform, which I'll show you a bit of later. Um, that helps crowdsource reproductions, um, shows people how to do improvements, and also facilitates discussion. Um, and then we are doing a broad assessment of reproducibility across journals, across fields, across claims, topics, etc. So in terms of the curriculum, this is based uh, largely on a guide that we've created. I've put a, a link here um, to our, our gitbook. Uh, so this is a, a set of step-by-step -step instructions for how to systematically conduct and record a reproduction. It includes chapters on how to choose a paper, how to assess reproducibility, how to make improvements on reproducibility, conduct robustness checks. Um, and importantly, with this, we're trying to kind of move conversations away from binary assessments of reproducible or not reproducible. Um, so the idea is to 
is to instead um, be more specific about what reproducibility means in a specific context um, and what improvement might mean. So for example, the cleaning code for this claim was not available, but I, I've here proposed some new code which will give us the same or similar results. Um, and also importantly, how to talk with original authors about this. Um, in the social sciences, there's been a, a history of, of retaliation uh, against researchers who have overturned previous results. Um, and while we don't want to discourage people from overturning results, if that is what happens, we want to, uh, we want to encourage conversations that are more constructive um, and less adversarial if possible. So showing people how to actually make improvements or how to do things different in the future. Um, this has generally taken two to four weeks for graduate students to go through. Um, so far, we've piloted this with uh, about 37 students and a couple courses, um, as well as one undergraduate student who wanted to do this for their, their thesis project. And it seems like people are, are enjoying it. Um, I think especially uh, the students are, are excited about having a language for how to discuss papers post-publication, um, as well as learning how to interact with authors who um, they may not have had a chance to yet. Okay, and then the, the reproduction platform um, or the SSRP, I've also put a link here as well. Um, a beta version is up, so there's definitely lots of changes that will be made, but if you're interested in checking it out, it's there. Um, but this is basically a platform that allows you to, through a custom form, record reproductions and improvements. Um, the, importantly, these are citable. We've partnered with Crossref to assign DOIs to these. Um, and also we've, we've partnered with Discourse, which is a, an, an open source forum uh, platform. This isn't yet on the platform itself. Um, we're hoping to get it up in the next month or so. And then eventually um, we're hoping that once we have enough reproductions, we can kind of produce a, a metrics dashboard that will show the distribution of reproducibility um, across claims, across papers and et cetera. Okay. Oh, also one other thing is that we are, we want to make it easy for others to build on top of previous attempts to reproduce. Um, so version control is a part of this. Um, and the each attempt of the same paper or the same claim will be connected to past attempts in order to kind of show a progression of hopefully improvements in reproducibility over time. Okay, and then the, the kind of last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the open questions we have and, and next steps. Um, we're hoping to improve the pedagogical features of the platform. So for example, trying to create instructor dashboards um, or course dashboards where students and, and teachers can talk with each other and review each other's work um, in privacy before submitting and, and making things public. Um, we do want the, the default to be, to be total openness and, and um, public reproductions, but we're also aware that there are risks to people's reputations. So we're trying to figure out how to allow anonymity on this platform. Um, one way we're doing this is to allow temporary embargo periods. Um, so for example, you can be anonymous for up to a year or something like that. Um, just to kind of like give you time to uh, ad advance in your career, for example, or to talk with the original author and um, reduce the risk to your reputation. At the same time, we also don't want to create a space for trolls. So we're thinking through how to assess quality. Um, oh, sorry, I realize I'm not checking time. Two minutes, okay. I think I'm a little bit over um, assessing quality. And then the last thing is that we're excited about getting buy-in from the wider community. So um, as I said, this is up on, uh, on the web. So if you are interested in giving feedback, please do. You can open up an issue on GitHub too for the, for the Git book. And if you're interested in teaching this in one of your courses, um, please let me know and we can, we can figure out